What's up everyone, my name is of course Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Today we're doing a guide on how to use Razer's Synapse 3 software. Synapse 3 is the bit of software that controls most of what you see on this desk here. We do have a Razer Black Widow Chroma keyboard and the Razer Naga Trinity mouse as well as their Siren Emote microphone which is what I'm actually recording this video on. So. Razer Synapse, once you have it set up and installed and either signed in as a guest or as I recommend, create an account so that you can have Cloud Sync, which means you can swap between computers and the settings are all the same. You have this, the dashboard. So the first thing you'll see on the dashboard is what programs, uh, what programs or what devices you have installed. Here's the three I just mentioned. You then have modules, which is uh, like Chroma Connect, Chroma Studio, Macros. We'll go through that a little bit later, show you what they are and what is available. And then just some online services. So really, this page, just a bit of information, a bit of a show you what you have. If we click onto the modules, you can see a few others I do not have installed. Chroma Visualizer, uh, Philips Hue Sync, and Nano Leaf all available. Um, I don't use them, but all available. You then have Global Shortcuts, Key Combos, things like that. Never really used that one. Um, but where it starts to get interesting is if we click on a device, or you can click up here, um, you will see said device. So what we have here is the mouse, and the first page that you see under Customize is the options that are required to change what a button does. Now left click you cannot change on a mouse. Right click you can change all of these. I actually have a couple of these disabled which is the sort of tilt left tilt right on this. Um, scroll up, set scroll down, all on here and as you can see as I press it it does actually go up and down as I require. Um, all of these simply click on the button and then down this side you then get all your options so you can have your default you can have some keyboard functions different mouse functions uh, adjust sensitivity choose a macro which we'll get into a little bit later into device so that is you choose the device so the black widow chrome is the only other one i have and you can then choose to switch the profile of that device using this device it gets a little bit confusing but yes they work across platform so I can change the profile on my keyboard using my mouse. Uh, you can also switch the profile of your mouse. Uh, choose different lighting effects. Uh, hyper shift which is effectively a bit like using shift. So you can press one button which then makes another button do something different. Okay, Rather than just what you have it set to as option one. Um, you can have it to launch programs, you've got multimedia options most of the most things you can think of um, a few window shortcuts uh, text function and then you can actually just disable the button uh, if we go to the next option obviously for the mouse for example though you can also do this for all the different sides um, lots of different options if we next go up to the performance so this is performance for the mouse where you can choose your sensitivity your polling rate um, again different profiles different options my, my DaVinci is just scrolling up and down. My default one that I normally run on actually has some stages, so I can go up. It goes up in numbers. Um, we then have lighting options, so you can actually have quick effects. So you can literally choose, right, I want my mouse to be breathing uh, green and white, which it will now do. Or green and off, sorry. Okay, or you can actually have advanced effects, which is where you choose your Chroma, um, Chroma Studio effect that you have developed. Quick effects is just quick and easy things. Um, so just spectrum cycling, and it'll just go through the colors. Um, advanced effects then is your Chroma. Uh, you do also have calibration for the mouse. Uh, mouse can be calibrated to surface, not one I've ever really bothered with. Um, keyboard similar setup choose a button choose what it does and you can literally change every single key on your keyboard so your q key does not have to be q key your q key which by going to keyboard function um, you can then rebind your key 
to a different one. So go to alphanumeric, right? So I want Q to actually be B. Now if I go down to here and press Q, B actually comes up. I no longer have a Q key. Um, we'll set that back to default though, just so that we don't have any problems. Um, and keys that have been edited have a green highlight on them, just to show you that the green, these green ones have had something done to them. The rest of them are standard. Um, again, profiles, you can have different profiles. Uh, so we can add another profile. So default one, uh, and then that profile will then be different to the original profile. Same options, just different profile. Set that back to my standard one. Um, I did forget to mention one thing about the mouse. On the mouse, you have a slightly different icon. There's a little icon there that looks like a SD card. If you click on that, you actually have onboard profiles. So all of your profiles will be listed down here and you can have four profiles on the actual mouse. What that means is you can set it up here, take it away with you, stick it into your laptop, for example, and have the same profiles. So that's pretty much it. Same lighting settings on the keyboard as you had the mouse. Quick effects, which is just like, you can have ripple. You can have spectrum cycling. You can have fire, all of the different things like that. You can then just click on advanced and you can choose one of your chroma effects that you have developed yourself. Uh, broadcaster, that one pops up if you have a microphone plugged in. Basically, it's microphone volume and the headphones that you have plugged into the microphone, the volume of those. Um, you then have... Now, I must say one thing. With the microphone, this is the emote. The lighting on this one is actually done by a different bit of software called the Streamer Companion app. Um, profiles, this is uh, making of your profiles. It's just a way of linking profiles to games or apps. So you can actually have this software, this hardware, switch its profiles to a different profile automatically upon opening a bit of software. So you can have a standard one for your desktop, a different one for CSGO, a different one for Apex, a different one for Fortnite, and they all change on their own. You don't have to worry about pressing a key to make sure you are in the right profile. Again, you can do the same with the hardware and you can also do it with the lighting. So you can have a lighting effect tied to an app or a program. Um, if we then go along to our connect, this is where you have uh, Razer Connect is basically a way of linking hardware with third party or even some of Razer's own other hardware. I did mention the streamer companion app It is effectively an extra bit of software. If I click on the apps, you get a web page opening where you can actually download and install some other ones. Basically, it means that your hardware that you have in front of you can react to things that these programs do. Um, I'm actually playing around with this Oprah GX myself at the moment, so we'll see about that later on. Um, but effectively, it's just having these programs um, change your keyboard and mouse themselves. Um, so you can have, if you have Slack installed, for example, you can have your keyboard react to a notification from Slack by flashing. Just a cool little addition. Um, the same with the Oprah GX, I believe that is what that does. Uh, Discord, Twitch, again, you'll have your keyboard or your mouse react to what is happening in that app. We can close that down now. If we then strip, uh, go over to the next one, the Studio. In fact, well, we'll skip Studio for now. We'll go to Macros because um, that does tie in with the keyboard and mouse that we were just playing with. Now, the Macros that you have here, this is basically, I've had a few that I've been playing with. Um, the Macros are where you create your combinations. A macro is a combination of buttons. So if we take that one, we'll delete that. Right, so you click the add button, you give it a name, so we'll call that test. Okay, so this is my test macro. Why did that not change? Because I forgot to click the save. So you type what you want, you click the little tick button, there you go, so this is my test. Now, to create your macro, you have two options. You can record, or you can actually physically insert. Now, record is easy. Click the record button, three, two, one, H-E-L-L-O, there we go and it records the pressing and depressing of that button. Hello, insert, you can then manually add in keystrokes or combinations or commands 
um, or actually groups of macros so you can have them strung together um, into this. Uh, I found the record is the simple one. Um, if we save that, which we have, that is now saved. If we go to my keyboard, um, choose a button, just change, choosing one of the macro one, dedicated macro buttons down here. Go to macro, choose my test one, click on save. You can actually have it to play multiple times. Um, you have it to effectively loop. Um, if we go down to here, I press that button. There we go. Hello types up. I pressed a single button and a series of things happened. That is what the macros are. So that is macros. Now the last thing to show you about the Razer Synap software is probably the most interesting and important and the lengthiest part of this software. What we have here is the Chrome Studio. This is where you will make your lighting effect effectively. So down here at the bottom you have your effect that you can have. You can have static, you can have wheels, you can have waves and then you can have them layered on top of each other. Um, so if we were to add in uh, let's say ripple and put that in above choose a color uh, blue uh, fill uh, save so we've now added a ripple effect on top of my static one so I've now got an effect that happens on top of my other one um, if we were to do it the other way around you probably won't see anything but you will still see okay so the order of these doesn't really make a massive amount of difference but you can have a static effect with things then happening on top of it just a cool little thing that you can do um, we will ditch that again though because I like my static um, and again you can have as many of these combined as you want and you can have it doing lots of different things you've got ambient awareness Quite a cool little one. This basically makes the keyboard react to what is happening within a program, game, or application. Quite cool. Um, it means that you can you can actually choose where in the screen. So, um, right, I want my keyboard to react to that part of my screen. Yeah. Uh, if we click on save, um, and if I was to open up a program, what was happening on the bottom of my screen would then relatively show up on my keyboard um, basically if the screen was all blue my keyboard would turn blue if the screen was all green it would turn green for example um, cool little addition I quite like it um, I've had a little play around with it but you've got all the typical ones the breathing the audio meter starlight um, again another cool little one we click on save remember do click save Do remember to click save because otherwise nothing will happen and you do need to choose a color <laughs> come on I was I had it doing this for me earlier there you go. let's ch just choose a pattern and click there you go save again or if, if in doubt remember to click the save button because nothing happens until you've clicked the save button um, you can actually hide an effect so if you develop something and you you want it but you don't want to keep it there you can just hide it and remember as always click save uh, if you don't want something anymore right click it you can rename it duplicate it or just delete it <coughs> so one thing we haven't discussed yet about the Razer Chroma Studio the first thing you actually need to do is so when you open it up it looks like that first thing you need to do this little icon here move you need to click that and it will turn into a moving thing where you can actually move your devices around um, it will automatically show you as fit all but if I just zoom out just to show you you do actually get a bigger canvas effectively and what you need to do is relatively place your items where they are on your desk so if you have your mouse right there you have your mouse right there if you have your mouse all the way over here what it is is when you have reactive things or things that move it plays them in the right order so if I put my mouse on this side a wave will then start at my mouse and move across my keyboard however 
that way around it starts at my keyboard and goes across my mouse so do set everything up that you want in the right order once you've done that click the save button and then you can go into editing like per key choose a key uh, change its color click the save button and the G key turns green um, choose a color press a key change the color there's a lot that this can do there is a lot more than I can discuss in a single video you could talk about this forever basically so there we go that is the chroma studio um, I'm not going to go massively into it because the best thing I can suggest is to go up to this bottom click on add create yourself a blank profile and just play um, you can't break it just keep playing if you don't like what you come up with simply go back to what you had before and you haven't done anything wrong it's back to the way it was so if you want to have a play create a new one um, you can always delete them you can't really go wrong so there we go so that is about it really for the Razer Synapse program um, now one thing I will say now Razer always gets slapped with what people say is Razer tax and I'm gonna say it's a load of rubbish because Razer tax is where that tax goes is into producing bits of software like that yes the hardware is when you initially purchase it more purchase it probably a bit more expensive than what else is available um, but you get Razer Synapse and that is where that extra money goes okay it doesn't go into uh, this might be a 100 pound mouse but it's, it may only actually be an 80 pound mouse 20 pound of that has gone into producing that software this bit of software isn't cheap to make or maintain and keep going and improve and that is where the money goes and I'm not gonna lie I love it um, I've had a few other keyboards in from other companies recently that were not cheap they were borderline this this sort of money and if I'm honest the programs just didn't support the value of the item the programs were they looked amateur built they were clunky the user interface was not easy to use this is easy to use you've just shown it I've just shown it to you there and it works and Razer software I've had other software where it is interfered with something else the Razer software I don't think I've ever had that issue um, and I've got three different RGB bits of software installed at the moment and the other three have all interfered with each other in one way shape or form in the past I've never had a problem though with the Razer software causing any of those issues so there we go guys that is about it for today that is the Razer Synapse software sorry this video has been a little bit long I hope it has been of a help and as always if you want to see more of me my camera has gone off and as always if you want to see more of me give it a big thumbs up if you don't thumbs down not a problem and as always thank you very much my name is Tom bye for now